All right, so exponential functions. And our basic form of exponential functions is going to look like this. It's going to be y is equal to a times b to the x power. a times b to the x power. A couple things about this, a cannot equal zero. A cannot be zero, because if a is zero, that just makes the whole thing zero, right? So a can't be zero. B cannot be one, and we'll talk about why in a little bit here. B cannot be one, and b also needs to be positive. So b it needs to be greater than zero. There's some stipulations here of, of what A and B have to have to be. A could be negative or positive. A could be anything except for zero. B has to be a positive number, which means it's not zero. And then it also cannot be the number one. Okay. So it's an exponential function. So we should be able to look at, uh, at equations, just like we did in the warm up, and now be able to tell, is it an exponential function? What makes it an exponential function is that our variable, our x value, is the exponent. It's not that there is an exponent period, it's that the x is the exponent, okay? So there is a difference there. So it's not just there's an exponent, this is not exponential. It's exponential if the x is the exponent, okay? Big difference there. All right, so that's what makes this an exponential function. Let's take a look at some examples in terms of a table. Okay, we've done this with linear before. We determined whether it was a linear function or not. We're now going to look at is something an exponential function or not, which means we got to figure out what does it mean to be an exponential function. One of those is linear. Which one of those is linear? A or B, yeah. B, not B. So that leaves? A. A, good job. Uh, so A is linear. How do I know A is linear? What about the table from A tells me that it's linear? Constant rate of change. Constant rate of change, right? We said it adds the same thing for X, adds the same thing for Y. That's what made something linear. When we're adding the same thing for X, adding the same thing for Y, constant rate of change. B does not have a constant rate of change. I'm not adding the same thing every time. Here I'm adding four, I'm adding eight, I'm adding 16. So it's not linear, but B is exponential. So what do you think it means to be exponential when we look at a table like that? Okay, so in this case, the y value doubles every time. But in general, linear, we add the same thing every time. Exponential, we multiply it by the same thing every time. I want you to write that down. In an exponential function, we multiply the same thing for y. So we need to multiply the same thing for our y value. Our x values are just going to add the same thing. So. Okay, so x adds the same, but y multiplies by the same thing every time. For B, for that table, this is the equation that goes with that. Okay, this is the equation of the exponential function that matches up with the table in B. 
I've got two numbers in my exponential function, in my equation. I got two numbers, right? I got a four and a two here. Raise your hand and tell me where do I find a four and where do I find the two in my table? What do we think those represent? Dave? Four is the starting number. Yeah, the four is the starting number. So four, that A value, that's my Y intercept. The A is my Y intercept. I'm gonna write that on here. A is the Y intercept. That's my starting point. Now let's think about why that is. If I know X is zero, that means that my exponent is going to be zero. And what do we know about anything to the zero power? It equals one, right? Anything to the zero power. So anytime X is zero, this whole thing cancels out. That's all I'm left with is that A value. So my A value is always going to be that Y intercept. Okay, what does this two have to do with anything? Either how much we're multiplying by? Yeah, it's how much we're multiplying by every time. So what we're multiplying by every time, that is the B value. So my B value is what we're multiplying by. Okay, so we know now, looking at our exponential function, what our A represents, what our B represents. Our y-intercept, and then what we're, what we're going to multiply by every time. Any questions so far in exponential function? Okay, we're going to get into graphing now. We are graphing today. So let's graph, let's go, and it's a function, so we can use y or f of x, right? Because it's still a function, so f of x is still there. Remember that just means y. Let's go with 3 times 2 to the x power. Three times two to the x power. So when we go to graph this, we are just plugging in numbers. Okay. Now, once we get the hang of it and we start recognizing some stuff, it becomes pretty easy. But we are plugging in numbers, and we're going to start by plugging in negative two, negative one, zero, one, two. Okay. Those are the five values that we're going to plug in every time today. Negative two, negative one, zero, one, two. And now we could, if we needed to, use our calculator, type in three times two to the negative second and get an answer. But I'm gonna show you a way to do this with probably without using a calculator. We don't need one. What do we know based on this number? What was this number? The y-intercept, right? This is the y-intercept. So that means when x is zero, y is gonna be three. I didn't need a calculator for that, right? That's just right there. That A value is always going to be my Y intercept. What if there wasn't a number in front? What number would that be then? What if I just what if I just had this as my equation? What's my A value here? Here are your choices, zero or one? It's going to be a one. Right, because if it was a zero, we already said a can't be zero. So that doesn't work. So if it was this, a would have to be one. I would have the point zero one in that case. Okay, but here we have a number. So our y-intercept is three. What did we say the two represented? And or what well, we're multiplying by. So as we go down, that's what we're multiplying by every time. So 3 times 2 is 6, times 2 is 12. 
And if I'm multiplying as I go down, what am I doing as I go up? Dividing. So three divided by two, I can just put that as three over two. Or you can do a 1.5, that's fine. Decimals or fractions today are gonna to be fine. And then I cut that in half. Well, if that's 1.5, I cut that in half, that's 0.75 or three fourths. Again, decimals or fractions here are fine. So we did all of that without using a calculator. We didn't need it. You might need a calculator if you're dividing by two and you don't know. Them. So let's take a look at what that graph is going to look like. First of all, any questions on how we did that? How we got those numbers? And again, if you need a calculator, by all means use it, right? I'd rather you get it right than be too proud to use calculator. All right, so let's graph it. We've got negative two, negative one, one, two. I've only got those X values. I'm not gonna draw in 10,000 little dash marks. I am only gonna do what I need. And all my numbers, they're all positive. So I'm just going up. I don't worry about anything down. So I have to go up to 12 though. So I'm gonna count by threes, three, six, nine, 12. Take a second, get a graph going here. Okay, and then we're gonna graph these points. Now, some of them are going to be pretty difficult to do. I'm counting by threes and I have to graph a 0.75, right? I get it. It's not going to be perfect and that's fine. But the bigger numbers I can for sure do. So two comma 12, two and 12, it's up here. One and six, that's here. Zero and three, negative one, one and a half. Well, that's halfway to three. 0.75, that's halfway to there. This is the type of shape that we're gonna see. And if I connect it, don't connect yours yet. So I wanna show you something. If I connect it, I am always gonna keep getting closer to zero. Will it ever equal zero? It can never equal zero, right? Because every time I'm dividing by two, no matter what, it's never gonna to get to zero. It's gonna get smaller and smaller and smaller. It's never gonna hit zero. So when you graph, your graph should not cross the axis. Don't just draw in a line that comes down here. I'm gonna mark it wrong, okay? Just have it hover right over the line because it's always gonna get closer and closer but never actually touch that line. Okay, it will never cross zero. So this is our graph. Go ahead, draw in your curve if you have it next. So this is the general shape that an exponential function is always gonna give us. I think of it as a rounded corner. It's basically what it is. It's a rounded corner, okay? If we keep going to the right, it's gonna get really tall really fast. If you've ever heard of something growing exponentially, this is what they're talking about. Because if I keep multiplying by three, now I'm at 36. I'm really tall, tall right? And then I'm at, 108, and then I'm at 324, and now I'm almost 1,000, right? And it didn't take that long. I was at three fourths here, now I'm at 1,000 at like six, okay? So it really jumped up really quick. That's why we only graph the ones around the axis. We don't wanna go too far, because now we're graphing in the hundreds, okay? All right, good deal. Any questions right now about this graph? Great. I've got a question for you now. What is going to change about my graph if I put a negative there? If we said A could be negative, what's going to change about my graph if I make A negative? Can be going down. Can be going down. If that's negative, 
That means all of these are going to be negative. I start with a negative 3 instead. I times it by 2, it's a negative 6, a negative 12. So the only thing that changes if my A is negative is that all of my values are going to be negative. That means my graph now is going to be going this way. Six, three, six, three. My graph is going to look now like that. So if A is positive, it's above the axis. If A is negative, it's below the axis. Okay? A is positive, it's above. A is negative, it's below. It's still never going to cross zero. Okay? It's still never crossing zero. But if A is positive, it's above. A is negative, it's below. Thank you to those of you that write notes down. Even if I don't say to write stuff down, you're still writing important stuff down. I appreciate that. That's good, good note taking right there. Not to guilt the rest of you for writing something, but I'm just saying. Deal? Any questions about this? Okay. We've got a couple more that we got to look at, a couple more situations here. If we had 3 times 2 to the x, we've got negative 3 times 2 to the x. What if we had this? Let's go f of x is equal to, let's say, 4 times 1 half to the x. Four times one half to the x. That's gonna be different now, right? We said that the b value could be a, a fraction. It just can't be negative, and it can't be one. It can be a fraction. If I go to create my x y chart here, I know for sure that my y intercept is gonna be four. Right? That's always gonna be the case. That a value is my y intercept. Now this time, what am I multiplying by every time? A half. Thank you to the three of you guys that are volunteering. Appreciate that. Uh, one half. I'm multiplying by half. So as I'm getting bigger on the x value, I'm multiplying by a half. I'm cutting it in half. So it's going to be a 2. It's going to be a 1. And if I'm dividing by 2 going down, what am I doing going up? Multiplying by two. And again, if we need to, if that doesn't make sense to you to use the A and the B value, knowing to start here and then what we're multiplying by every time, if that's confusing to you, then just type it into the calculator. Type in four times one half to the negative second power, and it's going to give you a 16. Okay? You can always use the calculator to get these numbers. I'm just trying to get you to be able to do it quicker and without it. So I'm here, if I go to graph this, I'm up at 16. I'll come by fours, 4, 8, 12, 16. Now I'm at negative 2, 16. Negative 1, 8, 0, 4. My graph now is coming down to the right. So it's still the same general shape, right? Still a rounded corner here. But now it's getting smaller every time. And then because you guys are bright young minds, you know already, without me having to say anything, that if it was negative 4 times 1 half to the x, it's going to be going this way. Because now it's flipped down underneath the axis. So these are the four possibilities for my exponential function. It's always going to look like one of these four. I'm going to give you a function. I want you to tell me if it's going to look like A, B, C, or D. Just by looking at the function. We should be able to tell. If 
fact, I'm going to write up like three of them, and then you can do three at a time. Alright, look at those. Figure out A, B, C, or D for each one of them. Remember, we're looking at A, the A and the B value. Where are we starting? And uh, what our B value is as well. Okay, talk to somebody about it. If they agree with you, if they don't, change their mind. All right, let's take a look. For number one, what do we think for number one? Ethan? D? Okay, we are a negative A value, so we're underneath the axis, and it's a fraction, so we're getting closer to the axis. So it is D. We're starting underneath, and we're getting closer to that axis. Good. So that is G for that one. How about number two? For number two, somebody raise your hand. Give me an answer here. Thumb. C. C. Remember that A value is one, so it's positive. We're starting above, and it's a fraction for B. So we are again, we are getting closer to that axis. So that is C. Good. And then for the third one, here what are we gonna get for the third one? Alan? B. B. We're starting underneath. We're getting further away from the axis. So that B value is telling us, am I getting closer to the axis or am I getting further away from the axis? So that one's going to be B. Good. Good, good. Any questions on that? Okay, let's talk real quick about domain and range. Okay, domain and range, because then we'll ask you for domain and range. Your domain is always going to be all real numbers. Because you have arrows on both sides, your domain is all real numbers. We've got another, another darn. Domain is all real numbers. Okay, the range is our y value. And so depending on which one we're looking at, our range here is never going to touch zero. So for A, my range is going to be y is greater than zero. Right? It's never going to be zero, but it's anything bigger than zero. And then if it's underneath, we're looking at y is less than zero. So for the great majority of these, that's what you're going to see. It's always going to be all real numbers for domain. Always, no matter what. Okay. The range most of the time is going to be either y is greater than zero, y is less than zero. You might see some things where, let's say they add on a number afterwards. I think you're going to run into one or two of these tonight. And I don't think they show up on the, on the quiz or test, but you're going to see them tonight. If that's the case, then you got to use a calculator. You got to plug in the number, you got to use your calculator, see what it's going to equal. Okay. But just know if we're adding or subtracting here, we know from previous stuff, this is a vertical translation. So we are going to be moving the whole thing down four. So instead of not hitting zero, it would not hit negative four. Okay. So that's going to tell me just am I moving it up or down? That's going to change that line that I'm not touching. And again, you're going to see that just a couple times. The great majority of the ones you're going to look at are exactly what we just looked at. Okay. All right. Good deal. Let me make sure that we're 
we're okay here. Any questions about anything? You're going to have a couple questions that are just identify. They're, they're going to give you the equation and like four graphs, and you're going to have to pick which graph is correct. Use that A and B value. Use that A value especially, right? We know that's the y-intercept. So find one that has that as the y-intercept, and then kind of go from there. 